So let's quickly recap what we said last time. We said that all currently existing political systems are aristocracies and the different names we use are just illusions. Then I mentioned pyramid of power explaining that all political systems basically have the same structure. Then we used donkey carrot and the stick analogy to explain ways and different strategies aristocracies use to accomplish work. At the end we mentioned slavery as widely adopted state of things in which regardless of nice suits and ties choices of ordinary people like you and me are quite limited and largely dictated by the system we've created. Before we continue, please subscribe. It will help the channel grow and it will also encourage me to dedicate more time to this. One more thing. Just for the sake of exercise, in future, each time you hear words like communism, socialism and even democracy, try to say no, it is not, it is aristocracy. Also, try to count how many times during one day you've heard those words. Ask yourself why people repeat those words so much. That small exercise will over time put things into perspective. So, why so important to accept that aristocracy is the only system we ever had? Like with any illusion, once when we learn what is the truth behind, we can find ways to change it. Let me give you an example. During periods of human history, for instance, in which white races exploited people of darker skin colors, slave, slave owners often used different excuses to justify slavery. You can read more about these excuses in the BBC article with, with the title Attempts to Justify Slavery. A uh, link is provided down in video description. Here I will mention only two. First excuse was that slaves are inferior beings, comparing them with animals and the ways we use domestic animals for our personal needs. Once when people learned that skin color is just a feature created by evolution in order to adapt to the planet's climate and that all humans belong to the same genetic tree, there wasn't any more room for justification of this illusion. That being said, it is important to mention that people abolished slavery on ethical basis a long time before we had hardcore scientific proof. The second, very frequently used excuse was that slavery is actually good for slaves. Because they didn't know how to look after themselves, somehow they would be happier if their lives were run by others. I would like you to notice how nowadays, in the midst of increased automation, some people frequently use the same argument to explain why it is important for people to continue to work, even when work is not necessary, and how in order to maximize profit for the shareholders, owners pay as little as possible for the provided work by employees ending up basically in the system where very small minority owns, controls and enjoys all the fruits of technological advancement. Before you get the impression that I am trying to say that the entire history was terrible, let me answer question are all aristocracies good or bad for the human race. Taking into account historical level of advancement and historical circumstances people were living in, those systems were neither good or bad. They were just one of the optimal strategies viable at the time. Simply put, technologically we have not had any means to co communicate faster over short and long distances. So we haven't came up with anything better. So if aristocracy is neither good or bad, why we need to change it? If we examine capitalism, for instance, we can conclude that while it works as theoretically predicted, it is a fantastic system for achieving progress. But also now we know that it is not suitable anymore, as it is literally killing the life on the planet and creates division between people. Same goes for pyramidal structure of power. 
it was good at the time, but now in the age of networks, internet and increased digital communication, the age where millions of people can collaborate or have country-sized referendums just in few minutes, we know we can accomplish things more efficiently. What about the slavery? Slavery too changed many forms and shapes through the history, and often it is tied with the question of freedom. To know what the freedom is, it is necessary to know limits and boundaries, how to change those limits or learn to accept them. Many people never realizing that they are in the game, accepted the given boundaries, have found their own liberation within. Others, like for instance those prisoners from the Second World War concentration camps, never accepting words are bacht, macht frei, have found some other ways. For a moment, imagine that life and evolution as we know it has its own consciousness, like it is living and breathing human being. Only purpose it has is to protect and spread itself to the universe. Now, living, dying, eating, mating, evolution, yielding new species in the process, we can consider as techniques to adopt, spread and protect complex life, adjusting to the planet's mood. Life also knows that if it stays on a single planet, it cannot protect itself from for instance, comet impact, or nearby supernova, or even dying sun. So, life needs to come up with something new, and the, that new is increasing intelligence of the certain species. Then, through the technological progress, life can spread outside of the boundaries of the single planet and the single solar system. Intuitively, we know that striving to stars is our future. So, from time to time, we have to let go of outdated things, like current governance systems, for instance, or at least upgrade them to respond better for the given situation, day and age. During short human history, we made many transitions, and we will need to make many more. Governance systems that got us so far simply don't work anymore. And if we don't transit to more suitable governance structure, we will diminish. One thing is certain. Those who cannot find new ways are bound to repeat the same mistakes. Through the centuries, we use one another for our selfish gains and needs. Masters and the slaves. Owners and the employees. So, if we know that there is no selfless deed, is there any hope for another approach? Personally, I like to believe that cooperation and negotiation, where all parties gather around mutual goals, share risks and benefits, can be a potential solution. And I will discuss more about it in the future videos, presenting alternative way to implement basic income with the help of basic tax control. Next time, I will talk about the means to leverage political power. Until that time, let me know what you think by pressing those thumbs up and down and commenting below. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you again.